to Eye on Horror, the official podcast of iHorror.com. This is episode 109, otherwise known as season six, episode 10. I'm your host, James J. Edwards, and with me, as always, is your other host, Jacob Davison. How are you doing, Jacob? Uh, doing good. Uh, things just been busy with uh, the Super 70s series at the theater. Um, been doing all 70 millimeter movies at the arrow and uh, a lot of great stuff uh, like uh, wild bunch 2001 lawrence of arabia yeah this has been very popular yeah that's why we missed an episode for those of you keeping track um also with us as always is your other other host john korea who's also really busy how you doing korea oh yeah uh, it's been a busy week. <laughs> You're busy bleeping out Don Rickles uh, <laughs> routines. <laughs> I, I mean, that, that's one of the projects. We were, yeah, we have a lot of projects going on, one of which was uh, Don Rickles' channel. We released the first never-before-seen special. So if you haven't watched it yet, please, so I can get some money. Um, but yes. A comedian from another time. So uh. <laughs> so yes, there was a lot of uh, bleeping because there's a, there's a lot of like, you know, of the time it was okay to say certain words and now it isn't. And I he never swore or anything. It was just, you know, terms for, you know, that are a little racist now. Yeah. Funny, Although I still... I still will never forget his cameo in uh, the movie Dirty Work with uh, Norm MacDonald. Um Yes. Where he's he's the uh, asshole theater manager who where he calls Artie Lang a baby gorilla. <laughs> for me, for me, it was always the TV appearances. I mean, he had the best ta- one of the best tales from the crypt episodes with uh, oh yeah with uh, Bobcat Goldthwait with the dummy. Uh, he was in a what because for me, Twilight Zone, the legendary episodes are all the Burgess Meredith ones, and he was in the one where. Burgess Meredith was the vacuum salesman and the aliens are experimenting. What if we gave him super strength, you know, uh, and Dawn is the one that picks on him. And then, uh, and, and then of course, Adam's <laughs> family where he was, uh, uh, I think he was a burglar. That one. I don't remember as, as much, but it, it, he was great. Check it out. Cool. Um, what do you guys been seeing? I saw something that has leaped to the top of my list uh, for the year so far. It's not quite Cocaine Bear, but Talk to Me. Oh, you guys see well, this? Oh, well, it, uh, no, we, we did a pre screening at the theater, but I didn't get to actually watch it. And it doesn't officially come out until the 28th. Yeah, it's it's. I saw like a pretty early screening of it um, because A24 will do that for us sometimes. Dude, this movie is bonkers. It's kind of like a Blumhouse idea, like a Blumhouse script because it's about um, a bunch of high school kids who have this – it's like a porcelain hand that – you can communicate with the dead with it. So it kind of has that whole Ouija board keg party feel to it. But it's – to use a term that we hate using, it's more elevated than that. Um, so it's like A24 got a hold of a Blumhouse script. Hmm. Um, it, it, oh my God, it is, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's so good. It's so scary. It's, it's just so smart. And um, the thing is, I want to know more about this, this porcelain hand, because supposedly there's a real psychics embalmed hand inside of it and they don't go into that. So it kind of leaves it open for like a prequel, but it's, oh, it's so much fun. So much. I've fun. been hearing that it's it's like a cross between like a Blum House and like Hereditary, you know, type deal. And I mean, that sounds awesome to me. And I, I it is. I really love that A twenty four like never forgets that like hey horror makes money. Like horror can help keep us afloat at the box office. And so they and they don't cheap out either. They don't go like oh we'll just put out a couple of like whatever so that we can make quick money. Like they they tend to be very high quality. Well, they this one, I don't think they actually had a hand in making it. I think they just bought it and distributed it because it's it's an Australian movie. But it's I mean, you can tell it's got the A24 thumbprint on it. You know, even if they didn't make it, they definitely have a type. (laughs) And this and talk to me fits it. It's so good. Uh, Yeah, I'm Yeah, No, I'm. I, I really wish I could have sat in and watched. Uh, I, I like I'm going to be seeing it as as soon as I get the opportunity. They're having um, more uh, early screenings on the 19th, which is before this episode will post. Um, so maybe one of those will be near you. I know I got a, um, I actually got an invite from the PR f- rep for a, um, they're, they're having a keg party after the Comic-Con screening. And I got an invite to that. But 
you guys know I haven't had a drink in almost 11 years. A keg party just does not sound fun I, to I me. I was about to say. But a keg, yeah. party, a keg party fits in with the theme of the movie, though, because it's about these kids who get drunk and try to contact the dead. But a um, tale as old as time. How else are you going to pass a Tuesday <laughs> night, you know, besides a kegger? <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, it's just a modern update on, uh, you know, like Ouija board horror, like uh, Witchboard. Mm. Yeah, it, it very much is. It's th- That's kind of what it is it's just you've got this hand instead of a Ouija board. That's why I think it's it has a Blumhouse feel to it. But oh, it's so good though. Yeah. Everybody see talk to me when it comes out. The twenty eighth is when the official release is. That's all. Awesome. But see it as soon as possible. That's awesome. I've been uh I've been hitting a couple of box sets real hard lately. Uh, my May West collection has I've been hitting hard, but that's not horror as much as I want to talk about May West all day. Um, but I've also been uh. Kino Lorber, about a year or so ago, put out this box set called uh, Cinema's First Nasty Women, uh, which is a collection of 99 short films. Um, and they were all uh, silent films that were either starring or made by uh, women. And they all had like themes of like comedy or gender play and things of like this. And I know what you're thinking, Korea, this is a horror podcast. Why are you bringing this up? I'll tell you. Uh, the first series in it is these French short films, uh, and they follow this character named Leo Teen. They don't know who this actress's name is, but she is fucking brilliant. And the character Leo Teen is a goddamn psychopath. It's basically like French Men- Dennis the Menace, but like on steroids. Um, there's one short where it's called like translated to like Leo Teen has some string, and like the whole episode is just her just like terrorizing this town with a roll of string tripping people tying it to bikes so it pulls shit (laughs) and it it just keeps escalating to the point where there's one that's innocently called leo teens pranks and this is like the 10th one or something so you're like deep in the series so this is this is a series of shorts this isn't just one no it's it's like 10 or 12 at least i don't know i i and how long are they they're they're not long i think the longest one is like six minutes um Okay. But this one called Leo Teen, um, Leo Teen's Pranks starts off very innocently with her like on the second story of a two story house. And she's like dumping dirt out of it. And it's landing on the person in the window below, you know, very short, filmy antics. And so the person below is like, oh, screw you, Leo Teen. Blah, blah, blah. And like all of a sudden, Leo Teen drops a rope around her neck and starts hanging her and like pulls the rope. So she's like. An inch or two off the ground, and so she's struggling with it. Another woman comes around, comes around, and like cuts her down. And then Leotine starts uh, ding dong dashing the house, like just ringing the doorbell and running off. And then they answer, and she's not there. Running, she does it like four or five times, and then they like come out with a bucket of water to throw it at her. But it was a tax collector that comes to the door, and so they hit him in the face. And then she, and then and that, that's like the first prank of the short. And then she just like keeps going on pranking, but like. What the fuck? Like she, it, it's like, oh, Leo Teen's gonna do some pranks. No, she straight up hangs somebody. Like what the like? Eh, it's yeah, it's kind of like that uh, Saturday Night Live sketch with Christopher Walken where he talks about pranking that guy in the back of the head with a tire iron. <laughs> Basically, I mean, oh man, this box set is great. Uh, there's there's a lot of weirdness, but it's just a nice, healthy reminder that uh, pre code cinema was truly unhinged. Like. They, they got away with so much. And this is just, uh, uh, again, there's 99 shorts on there. This is like the first 12 or so. So I'm really excited to keep diving on that. But yeah, I just wanted to share it like Leo teen and just being a fucking menace. I, I still can't believe just straight up hang somebody. And it's, and it's played off like, oh, isn't this funny? It's, no, she nearly murdered somebody like straight up. Oh, and then the next short, she like, I don't know, loses a dog and a kid. And so everyone's as she puts up a flyer saying missing dog and kid. And so everyone starts like bringing random babies and dogs to her house. She's supposed to be cleaning the house, but like all of a sudden she's got like all these dogs and kids and babies. And then like the parents are flipping out and they go in the kitchen. The kitchen's flooded and on fire and there's babies and puppies everywhere. I have I have watched that short four times and I have no idea how it es- escalated like that, but it did. Um, so, yeah, Cinema's First Nasty Women. Uh, highly recommend that collection. It's brilliant. Uh, on the subject of collections, uh, I did go through what may be 
possibly one of my favorite uh, box sets this year. Uh, it was Enter the Video Store, Empire of Screams from Arrow. Uh, John, I assume you got this one too? I have it pre-ordered, but I pre-ordered it with Diabolic DVD and I ordered the uh, Walter Hill collection at the same time. So once they get that copy in, I'll get that. But that's going to be uh, a brilliant fucking day. Let me tell you. Yeah. Uh, to explain, basically, Arrow put out a big box set of a bunch of movies released by Empire Pictures, which was uh, the company that Charles Band uh, was in charge of before Full Moon. And they did all kinds of crazy ass movies with lots of practical effects and spectacle. And the set includes uh, The Dungeon Master, Dolls, Cellar Dweller, arena and robot jocks so a lot of uh Stuart gordon and john carl beekler movies and they're all fun as hell the highlight being arena which only ever has had a dvd including because they put out an empire box set and that was the only one that was available in sd on the box set arena is fucking brilliant because it's basically what if rocky was in space with aliens with aliens <laughs> But like no budget. It's 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 brilliant. I watched it one Christmas morning. Well, they put all the budget into the monsters, which is where it belongs. (laughs) Yes. There's like some like terrible. He looks like a he moves like a rock'em sock'em robot alien. I mean, that's pretty much what they are, you know, just because it's like the 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 Ivan Drago alien is named Horn and he's like this cyborg wolfman with like a robot arm. I, I'm telling you that that that's the reason why I bought that box set because a lot of these titles were released through Shout Factory and I was like I'm selling those Blu-rays and I'm getting this for Arena and HD because that movie's so Yeah, good. I mean a bunch of the bunch of those weren't even uh, Blu-rays like Arena was only on DVD uh, and yeah, no, and these were uh, these are upgraded restorations like they're all 2K uh, restorations or HD. Um, I was particularly excited for Dungeon Master, which I consider to be kind of the um, encapsulation of Empire Pictures because it was this crazy idea to kind of do this adventure anthology thing with like this computer programmer fighting this demon Dungeon Master guy who sends him into multiple worlds with like all these kinds of monsters and creatures and, uh, you know, dangers. So like he's fighting uh, like uh jack the ripper in one and then he's fighting a giant like incan statue in another and it's and john carl beekler and uh charles band and a bunch of other people with the company directed all these different segments so it's it's just basically everything you could ever expect in an empire pictures movie in one movie i i'm so excited for that box set no it's it's an amazing set and uh yeah, and of course, Stuart Gordon's Dolls and Robot Jocks are fun, and Cellar Dweller by Beekler is also a really nice addition. And I'm really hoping that they do another volume of these and do like more Empire Pictures uh, stuff because, like, they got a whole you know library to choose from of other crazy ass practical effects heavy movies. It's a it's a huge box set though, like size, oh, right? Yeah. Though, like, it's a, it's- oh yeah, it's a brick. Like they went all out with it. And also, it has a great booklet about the history of uh, Empire Pictures and the individual movies and kind of its rise and fall. Because, you know, it was the king of home video until uh, they kind of stretched their resources a bit too thin. It looks like a shelf killer. Uh, all the pictures yeah, I've seen. It's not too it. bad, but it's still, it looks fun. It, it, it looks great. That's awesome. Another thing that I saw, which is a little old at this point, um, I saw Missing. Have you guys seen this? Yes. Uh, it's kind of like the um, sequel to Searching from a few years ago, um, but it has nothing to do with it. But I, but it's the same general thing where it's like all, it's kind of screen, you know, you, you see everything on screens and it goes a little more off the rails than Searching. <laughs> I mean, it's a little more crazy. It still has a lot of the same types of fun twists, but it, it goes way further than searching does. It, i think it's on netflix now uh but uh yeah it is yeah it yeah. is Lindsay and i uh, were big fans of uh searching and so when that became available for cheap uh we watched it and we had a lot of fun with it it would i gotta say plot wise it goes a bit soap opera with some of the, <laughs> yeah. the there's some twists and whatnot but it's still a lot of fun and while the main story is not a sequel remember 
those guys, because of all the screens and stuff, love to do little Easter eggs with stories happening in the background. There is a sequel in it to what was happening with the alien invasion subplot in the first movie. What? Uh, yeah, if you if you look for the headlines and stuff, this is just one of the Easter eggs that they hide in it. You can see that the there was a crash uh, from the alien invasion, uh, and someone got superpowers. And so when they're searching for stuff, you'll see headlines where where it's like, "Who is the Emerald Avenger?" or something like that. Um, so there's a secret superhero story or origin story happening in the background, which is fun. I don't remember that subplot in searching. It's it's literally like like when they're searching on like their Google or something, you'll see like a headline that's like mysterious sight seen above the sky. It's it's literally like sometimes blink and you'll miss it uh, type deals. Or there'll be something where there'll be like an, uh, an extra in the background wearing a shirt about it or something. So like you really got to look for it. Um, that's why um, the special features for those movies are a lot of fun because they hint at like the major hidden subplots. Uh, but apparently there's like a few more if you keep like pausing and looking for it. So there's there's rewatchability. That's the filmmaker playing with his audience then. Well, you, you got to remember that they, bi- they they build all those interfaces themselves. They spend most of their uh, time making the movie, building that, and then filming the segments to fit within it. So, yeah. I mean, I'd be hiding fucking Easter eggs left and right if I was doing that, too, for years. No, I mean, that is an interesting way to go about go about it. Uh, and I, and that does make me more interested in seeing it myself. Yeah. The, yeah, this one, it's um, searching was a guy looking for his daughter. This one is a daughter looking for her missing mom. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, it, it really goes off the rails. <laughs> it super <laughs> does. Oh, no, it's, it's totally fine. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, because where else can you go from searching? You get sucked in, man. Yeah, Searching was a pretty serious movie, and, you know, the little twists and turns, you're like, oh, you know, you're surprised, but you're like, okay, that makes sense. This one, the twists and turns, it's almost like, oh, come on. You know? Well, and they also, <laughs> they open up with, like, the main character watching a dramatic reenactment of the story from the first movie. Like, she's watching one of those true crime stories, but it's about yeah, the yeah. case from the first movie. Because I remember it opened up, and it was very cinematic, and I was like... Oh man, they already broke their formula, and then all of a sudden it pulls back, and she's like watching it on Netflix or something. I was like, "Ah, oh, okay, that's funny." I, you guys, you guys know me. I'm, I'm not the as far as a critic, air quotes. Uh, I'm not the type to bash a movie um, because I recognize that there's a lot of hard work that goes into them. But have you guys seen Creep Show three? Nope. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I have. I made the mistake of buying the Blu-ray from Shout Factory because they're like, "Oh, we only made fifteen hundred of these," and I'm a completionist. I made it halfway through before I, I couldn't take any more. Um, it's not it it's not fun. It doesn't have the fun of the other creep shows because it's real CG. You know, it's like <laughs> even even the CG cartoons and in, in the in betweens is bad for the era it came, for two thousand six when it came out. But my whole my, my biggest grievance is it's creep show only in name. There's no Romero and King were not involved at all. It's not based on any EC comics, and it it has none of the humor, none of none of the style. It, it has almost nothing to do with creep show except for it getting the name creep show three. And it was, and that just like aggravate it added to it, you know. Like if it if it said it was something else, I would probably would have finished it. But like that aggravation, so save, save your save your money, guys. Don't don't buy the Blu Ray. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I passed on that. Um, but in terms of new releases, uh, I did uh, see the new Insidious movie, Insidious: The Red Door. Uh, did either of you guys see it? No. No, they didn't screen it for press, at least not in my market, which is usually a pretty bad sign. But it made some money, though. Oh, yeah. No, it was number one at the box office. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah, it was also Patrick Wilson's directorial debut. You know, I did that thing where they let the star direct. And yeah, no, honestly, he did good. I I thought it was fine. Although I just like calling in. uh, in, uh, I just like calling the movie Insidious 5 Insidious Goes to College because (laughs) <laughs> that's the, that's the basic premise. It's like uh, nine years after the first movie and uh, the kid from the first movie is now a teenager, very moody teenager, and he goes off to college and uh, him and his dad, played by Patrick Wilson, are starting to get um, 
you know, connected to the further again and like the weird red demon and ghosts and stuff are going after them while uh, the son's in college and Patrick Wilson is dealing with uh, his like his divorce and like all this other stuff back at home. Um, and, you know, it's a pretty good setup, uh, especially because, you know, just the franchise has been all over the place. Uh, like there's a particularly scary scene where Patrick Wilson's getting an MRI and then the further starts to leak in. So they, they they do still uh, have a, a lot of good scares in them. Yeah, I, I need to catch up on the Insidious series. I think I've only watched the first two. So I need a marathon sometime soon. I really liked, um, was it the, the, the last key? Yeah, the last that key, the that was the called? fourth one. Yeah. Uh, the recent one. Yeah, I really liked that one, hmm. which it was. it's kind of a prequel. You know, it's it's it goes more into um, or I don't know if it's a prequel or if it just concentrates uh, no, more on prequel, the Lin Shea character. Yeah, it, it concentrates more on the Lin Shea character. Yeah, yeah. But uh, that that one's fun. Well, uh, speaking of new releases, I caught two last night because I went, fuck, I haven't watched any new horror. I've been watching too many nasty women and Mae West movies. So <laughs> uh, I watched Wrath of Becky, um, which if nice. you listen to previous episodes, you know, I, I liked the first one. It just wasn't entirely my vibe. Um, Wrath of Becky, though, uh, is definitely my vibe. Uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, in this one, Becky's older. She's been bouncing you know, from foster homes and taking care of herself. And she ends up living uh, with this older woman uh, and her dog. And uh, these uh, <laughs> men's rights proud boy-esque group uh, ends <laughs> up she ends up pissing off one of them. And so they go to her house and they um, kill the older woman and kidnap her dogs, which pisses off Becky, of course. And so she sets out to unleash her wrath on them. Um, and just like the title, <laughs> just like the title. And one of the reasons why I really liked it is uh, Becky has grown. I like to I like how you see they what they did with a character that went through a lot in the first movie fighting Nazis, you know, and how that's affected her. And she's grown up to be uh, kind of a badass and has like a lot of fantasies of like taking her, her wrath out on people. And so these guys basically give her a pretty damn good excuse. Um, I will say, um, you know, because the only thing that we do spoil is dogs dying. Uh, dog doesn't die. I was about to ask that. Dog doesn't die. Okay. But there's a lot of instances where it feels like the dog's about to die. So you're like on the edge of like, you're not going to do this, are you? It's like three or four times they do that to you. It's uh, it's rough. Well, because because a dog dies in the first Becky. Right. Oh, uh, yeah. That's right. This one. No, they, they avoided that. Um, So you're good. But I will say you 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 will clench your butt thinking that the dog's about to die a few times. <laughs> Is it the same actress? Yep. What's her name? Lulu Wilson or? Yep. Lulu okay. Wilson is still Becky. And uh, Sean William Scott plays the leader of this group. And um, they're like planning an insurrection uh, as well. So Becky gets an upgrade, basically. It's no longer just like trying to do Home Alone and like making stuff out of pencils and rulers and stuff. Like she straight up like mercs dudes with like military grade stuff, which is great. Um, but it's a lot of fun. Sean William Scott, I think needs to be playing more villains cause he's fantastic in it. And, uh, yeah, if you like the first one, wrath of Becky's awesome. If you cut, if you're like me and you, you're like, yeah, that one was pretty good. Um, see wrath of Becky. I, I thought it was a, it was a great improvement. Um, the other one I watched is, have you guys heard of the angry black girl and her monster? Uh, yeah, I've been wanting to check that out. Yeah, that one's interesting. It's it's a modern uh, interpretation of Frankenstein, and it's about this um, uh, young black girl named uh, Vicaria who is very smart, but she's obsessed with death and keeps saying that death is a disease and needs to be cured. And uh, both her mother and her brother were killed due to uh, gang violence. And so um, – She's uh, she's trying to resurrect her brother in in a very Frankenstein-y way. You know, she stole the body and she's using other bodies to like revive her. Um, people in the in the ta- in the city keep uh, referring to her as like the body snatcher, even though they don't know it's her doing it. They're like, oh yeah, and then there's a body snatcher taking bodies and parts. And uh, it's a it's a first uh, time director who wrote and directed it. And it's really solid. Um, one of the things I really appreciated about the movie is that they really focus on because a lot there's there's been so many Frankenstein adaptations uh, 
that have happened. And so there's different interpretations focusing on different aspects of the book. And with this one, it really focuses on how in the beginning, uh, Victor Frankenstein lost his family. And so that was his driving force to be doing these. He wasn't just some guy obsessed with death. Like he, you know, there was an emotional arc and reason for that. And so they really focus on that with this film and her brother kind of becomes this uh, monster because that's what everyone's projecting on him. And he kind of becomes like that unknown fear that a lot of people, especially police uh, project onto young black men. And so there's a lot of great commentary. Uh, there's some uh, decent effects and kills for the, if, if you need that with your social commentary, but uh, yeah, the angry black girl and her monster is is, is really solid, and uh, I believe it's coming to Shutter later this year. So if you can't see it in theaters, uh, check it out once it hits there. It's also available to rent on Vudu. Same with uh, Wrath of Becky. I caught up with a couple of things that both of you, well, one from each of you that you guys saw that I that I hadn't seen yet. Okay. Um, first off, I finally saw Duel. Nice. That that Jacob was all about it was not the movie i thought it was going to be i thought it was going to focus more on the duels oh with an e duel um but it was more about the relationship between the original and the copy you know i it it was it, it was not i mean it was good i i enjoyed it it just was not i thought it was gonna be more action oriented um and karen gillen is like she plays it like she's in a Yorgos Lanthimos movie. It's like all deadpan. So at times you're like, okay, I can see why people would get them confused. You know, the, 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 the copy and the original, but yeah, it, it, I, I was expecting it to be more action and more fighting when it was more kind of prepping for that. But it was, it was, it was fun. And the other one I saw, I saw 65. Yeah. That Korea had seen. Yeah. It, that was exactly what I thought it was going to be. That one was, it was just, it was, it was camp as can be. There's one point towards the beginning of the movie where Adam driver's character is carrying the girl that he finds, you know, through this rainy forest and he looks down and he sees like a T-Rex footprint. And I'm like, yes, I'm in, this is it. <laughs> so much fun. So many people were trashing on 65, uh, sometimes you just need you got to understand what it is and, and sometimes you need it it's a b movie with like a great budget like and it's a lot of fun like it reminded me a lot of those like dinosaur movies that would yeah. come out in the 60s and 70s like the the land that time forgot and stuff like that like you know what you're getting with it and it delivers uh there's a few and and it like elevates again i don't like that but like there's a few moments where it's like okay so you're doing something a little bit more but it's it's mostly just delivery again i really like the whole i uh just plot or thing of there's they speak two different languages and adam driver being you know the typical white guy is basically not learning her language and is forcing her to learn his language throughout the whole thing but that language barrier adds to it because it's like we're trying to survive together but we don't understand each other which adds to it um but yeah 65 is just fun like if, if you got time to kill it's on netflix check it out is it on netflix as well yeah both 65 and missing um they were they were cheap on voodoo they were like five bucks to buy so mm. i just i just bought them both yeah i think uh netflix has a deal with sony because those are both sony releases so yeah Right, let's move on to our guests. Um, today we have a pair of special guests. We have Andy and Kelsey from the Lethal Lullabies podcast. How you guys doing? Great. Thanks for having us. I got to sleep in today. I'm I'm doing really great. <laughs> <laughs> we um, Lethal Lullabies is a new podcast, and uh, what Andy and Kelsey do is um, they take the stories of action movies. And they they kind of tell them in the form of lullabies or sleepy time stories. So it's almost like an ASMR telling of this high octane story. Is that is that a good way to describe it? How would you guys describe it? I, I mean, I think that's basically our podcast description. It, like in the you nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, so I have a question. Um, would you say uh, th these are stories that uh, uh, children can listen to, or is this something for, I guess, uh, the child and all of us uh, who love action movies? I would say absolutely, because 
th- um, there's no cursing. There's actually no death. Oh. Um, our characters, instead of dying, simply fall asleep. Oh. Um, and so I think this is actually the best way to introduce your children to these violent, aggressive action <laughs> films. And then when they finally see the movie, they're completely shocked. Yes. <laughs> well, welcome to adulthood, <laughs> as adulthood often does. Right. Shock us. But yeah. that's not your problem. <laughs> yeah. well, well, to give context, because uh, your first few episodes, because you also break it down into like 15 minute increments, because the the podcast is designed to put you to sleep. So to do a full 12, two hour movie at once, you're going to fall asleep before it ends. But the first one you guys are doing is, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong with the retitling, but it's Mild Max Sleepy Road. Right? <laughs> That's it, yeah. <laughs> yep, based on Mad Max Fury Road, as opposite as the title could get. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. Let's say, um, let's kind of start at the beginning. Um, how did you guys get into podcasting? I mean, what, what are the origins of your podcast? And have either of you done podcasting before? Or how, how did you get started? No, this one's Kelsey. Go for it, Kels. This is her baby, <laughs> her brain baby. Um, I hadn't done podcasting before, but um, I work in television as um, a sound utility, and I've been doing some sound design work for short films. And I also wanted to start getting into screenwriting, um, which was, I just realized that's a muscle that I need to practice. I can't just write perfect scripts from the beginning. So I wanted some kind of project where I could just one practice screenwriting and two, um, or storytelling and two not feel really terrible if it didn't come out perfect. And so podcast was a great Avenue because I have so many resources in regards to sound design. Um, and so I just was exploring different routes to how do I do this. I was chatting with Andy about I I listen to a lot of sleep podcasts and because I have insomnia. So um, I was telling her about how the voices on the podcast are I think the most effective part of putting you to sleep, and that sometimes the stories are really dumb. Like I had one I was listening to for a long time about an underwater window washer. And like the visuals were kind of cool and I liked it, but like they just were really telling you about like, and then he gets in his car and it's like pretty much is like if you were to just follow someone on their really mundane day in their life, uh, work day. And I was like, Oh no, like I can't also bring my work life into my falling asleep moment. Like that can't be my life. (laughs) So <laughs> that like it would be kind of a funny thing to try marrying that like very soothing voice with something that is more attention grabbing. And so it's just kind of an experiment at the beginning. But like as soon as Andy took the material, like I was still thinking it was kind of a joke. And then she gave it back to me. And I was like, oh, gosh, like this is very effective sleep material like it works really well and i'm I'm still to this day very surprised so it's just yeah it's a good sleep podcast it'll make you fall asleep (laughs) can you walk us through your process i mean how what do you do like once you decide that you want to do a movie what does it go from decision to final podcast uh Well, I'll touch a little bit on um, just kind of our first because it it took us a perfect year to get to our launch party, which was really kind of cool because like we started out being like, let's do it. And let's also take the pressure off of ourselves for a timeline, but also hold ourselves as accountability. Like even if we're taking baby steps, but like if we if we say, oh, let's have it done by the end of the month and the end of the month comes around, we're like, this month was insane or my mental health was uh, fritzed out or I didn't get it done. And we're like, okay, well then let's try it for next month. And like, so I'd say that that was a biggest part of our process is like just constantly open communication, where we're at, what our lives are like, our to-do list and what's actually feasible. And then of course, um, the process of on my part was the longest I felt because I, uh, am just kind of busting out into my voiceover career uh, over the last couple years. And in the last, basically since last summer, I have acquired 
a full tent that I'm actually like sitting in right now that for soundproofing. I've acquired a new laptop. Thank you, dad. Um, I have acquired my, you know, my, my mixer, my microphone, my headphones, all of these things came slowly, but surely over the course of a year. So that was kind of like get the process of getting the actual podcast to where it's at now. Um, in terms of like how we are ch- like moving forward, uh, we're shooting for a movie a month. Um, we're kind of talking about like doing three months and then like taking a little break and cause it's a lot of work. <laughs> we are putting in some time, um, trying not to be too much of perfectionists when we start to lay in our sound effects. And we're like, it's like the end of the episode. And we're like, no, I need the little rocks falling. <laughs> and we're like, they're asleep by now. But no, we need it. Um, so yeah, we, we pick our movie. We sit down and we watch it together, sometimes holding hands. Um, <laughs> meanwhile, well, well, we're not holding hands because Kelsey is like mad typing the whole time. And <laughs> I'll push uh, this last movie. We were actually with with Prey. We were actually a lot more clear of our process. So um, I was making notes about sound effects that we wanted to pull out and start researching right from the bat and, and, and getting. And she was, you know, mad dash typing. I'd push pause um, and then. We spend like we're, we're hoping first week of the month writing, second week of the month recording, third and fourth week editing, and then we release our first episode the first weekend of the month. And each episode, it's four. Each movie is about four episodes. So you do an episode a week. Yes, uh, Ideally. anywhere between like twenty five and four. Like our first episode of the next movie is gonna be like probably forty minutes. So, because uh, it's a little longer, the movie yeah. is a little longer. <laughs> you guys are speaking my language. I, I, whenever I see a podcast that runs like ninety minutes, I'm like, Marcus played. I like <laughs> keep it under an hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the sweet spot. And in terms of the it. movies you select, uh, what is your process in choosing them? And do you have a uh, list of movies that you're going through right now? Um, we did make a big master list, but I think for the first two movies, we each just took turns picking our favorite. Mm-hmm. So Mad Max is my favorite. Right. That's right. I was like, Kelsey, why did we pick Mad Max? It's your favorite. It's, yeah. I just, <laughs> I love it. I, I saw it like in theaters for the first time. And I, th- I think it's weird to emphasize that, but I just don't see as many movies in theaters anymore. And it like hits you real hard. Um, and I've watched it many times since then. And I, I don't know. I just love it. And um, and then Andy uh, picked our second movie. So I'll let you talk about that one, I guess. But. Well, we re- we originally <laughs> I was like because I'm a huge Predator fan um, and I was like Predator. And we watched the first Predator with our good old Arnie. And it's great. It's very male driven. And it's very masculine. It's like a lot of dudes. So um, I was like, why are we doing this? Prey just came out. And it's Prey is officially like top five favorite movies for me. It checks off so many boxes. Predator. It, it's like you are one of the original, like the first early uh, evolutions of Predator. So he's got like tech that's a little off. I love it. Anyway, I could geek out about Predator. <laughs> But it's got Predator. It's got an incredible female lead. And it uh, really highlights uh, the Comanche tribe, which I'm Apache. So my really like seeing natives represented on that screen in such an incredible way where they're the heroes. And it's it was it's just my favorite movie. So that was an easy choice for me. And I was like, yes, this is what we're doing. Um, but the third one. I guess we've been throwing things around for our third movie. And I was like, well, we got a white lady hero. Well, Kelsey was like, let's pick a third female driven action film just because like that'll be our first three. You yeah, know, we've already little... kind of chose we we're going to do three movie seasons. And yeah, just by coincidence, we picked two female driven and not even just female driven movies, but female driven movies in a franchise of male. Like it was very weirdly mm. specific like two out of three, I was like, we should just finish it go off. It. It'd be very random to go somewhere else. So yeah, I wanted to do Hannah, but I think that's like too <laughs> obscure. So yeah. we're trying to find something a little more in the mainstream. Kelsey also commented like Prey was great because it's up for consideration now. So it's very relevant. Um, we've thrown a couple movies out for our third movie. Um, 
if you guys have any suggestions, if anybody's listening, if you go on our website, there's a suggest an action film spot for any movies everybody wants to throw out. We should I tell them what I said the other day for? Yeah, I mean, like I think that's the. You think it's we're gonna go with it? I I think think we we're gonna do Woman King. I think we're going to do Woman King for our third one. Yeah. Get some some Viola Davis up in our. That that gets it done. Yeah. Lives. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You heard it here first. (laughs) Yeah, folks. Exclusive. (laughs) We have the exclusive. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Love getting exclusives. Yeah. Um, uh, I know eventually we'll, we'll chat on it, but like I've been, I don't know why I'm just obsessed with picking our October movie. Uh, because I just love Halloween and I need an action scary film. It has to be action packed and it has to be like horror themed. And so I know we'll get to that eventually where I'm sure you guys have a little trove of oh, suggestions you could yeah. throw our way. Yeah, oh. brains are already like the clockwork oh, yeah. is ticking. I just turned it on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, if if we want to do a, a round of uh, quick round of suggestions, suggestions like we'll we'll keep coming back. But first round of suggestions, Jacob, you got one? Oh yeah, tales from well, the crypt. I'll tell you real. Oh, I'll tell you really quick. I already have twenty eight days later on my the top of my list. Mm-hmm. So if you guys had that in mind, but please, tales from. The oh, well, I was going to say, tales from the crypt presents Demon Knight. Um, that's that yeah. that one came to mind at first, and Ooh. you know you got uh, Jada Pink and Smith and Billy Zane and uh, esteemed character actor William Sadler. Uh, and yeah, there's a, there's a lot of horror, comedy, and action in that one. And Jada's badass in that movie. Oh, yeah. Like, hard, she's hardcore. <laughs> oh, yeah. So she she's, she's incredible in that movie. I have a suggestion that's also female-driven. It's funny that, that we're coming up with all this. You're Next. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Ooh. I, think, I think would be a, a good Halloween episode. I don't, I don't know that guys. one. I don't oh, know you guys either. You guys have not it. seen You're Next? Oh. <laughs> I've you seen guys, no you, horror movies, though. Oh, so. you guys need to see You're Next. It's okay. it's um, it's it, it's basically about this family that gathers for some celebration. I don't know if it's an anniversary uh, it, or Thanksgiving. Yeah, it's, a, it's and, a parent's anniversary. Yeah. And these uh, killers with uh, animal face masks start breaking in, but one of the guests of the family, one of the guy's girlfriends, grew up in like a survival camp so she is not going to take this lion down so um so she's basically fighting off home invaders so yeah you oh you guys gotta see your next okay okay i'm on it i'm a big horror fan man i mean me. female driven i mean there, there's it doesn't uh, have to be the no we were, no no we we're making the female <laughs> driven thing are, and I just yeah it just yeah. kind of it just kind of popped for us uh, yeah, I think we just kind of uh, uh, inexplicably fed the formula. If you got something that's not <laughs> no, 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 I was I I had one lined up, and I was like, oh, that's not female driven. I gotta I gotta think of another one. I'm trying to think of like a really really good one that isn't aliens because aliens is the obvious choice. Oh that's yeah, what I, yeah, that, that's there what you Andy go. Said, yeah, there yeah, you that's got to be on the list already. But yeah, we for for not obvious choice, ready or not. I mean, that's oh, huh. also good. That's a that's a really great one. If, one. if you guys haven't seen that one, it's Samara Weaving. I gotta catch up. Is um she's a bride to be, uh, and she's about to you know it's like right before her uh, wedding. Uh, they have the wedding, and she's marrying into this very rich family who have old money, and it's um and so it's part of their tradition that uh that the family plays a board game, uh the uh the uh. The, the, on the wedding night, right? Uh, but there's a sinister twist to it. And so when they pick it out, if they pick hide and seek, it becomes the family hunting the bride. Uh, but of course, it's Samara weaving. So she does go, she doesn't go down easy. That's yeah. for certain. Um, but it's great. Uh, there's some really great performances. Uh, Adam Brody's in it and he's just always a delight. Love Adam Brody. Um, <laughs> Who else is it? There's uh, there's another actor. Is is it Andy McDowell? Is that um, I think so. Andy McDowell is, is the the mom. Yeah, is that is that? Oh, her I name? love Andy. Yeah, and it was directed by uh, the Radio Silence team that went on to do the Scream sequels. Melanie uh, Scrofano, that's who I was thinking because she's uh, in Letter Kenny and Star Trek uh, uh, Strange New World. So that's. Uh, but yeah, Ready or Not is fantastic. It's actually my partner Lindsay's favorite movie. So uh, if that helps I, now, sell it. 
<laughs> now that you're mentioning it, I have definitely heard a recommendation for this movie in the past. And so I, well, I'll put them all on my list, but mm. I know for sure that one is. I, I've heard a lot of good things about that movie. Oh, and it gets gooey. So that's, <laughs> that's one of the reasons why it's one of my favorites, but try it, not to it spoil has anything. one of the most bonkers endings. You're, mm. you're, oh yeah. Yeah. By the time it gets to the end, you're like, oh, is this really happening? It's, mm. it's amazing. <laughs> Love that. Ooh, and that one already has the title, Sleepy or Not. There you go. Uh, oh. oh. That's <laughs> what we got to do with the recommendations. We got to make sure that oh. we can do Sleepy's oh, titles. wait, I got one. Uh, for mine, okay. it, it, you go from Tales, from Tales from the Crib Presents Demon Night to Tales from the Crib Presents Sleepy Night. <laughs> yeah. That's good. <laughs> and the, the only thing would be for your next to be your sleepy. <laughs> there you go. Prey was a really difficult one for us. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, my God. We threw some ridiculous stuff around. When we did our Prey episode, we did. We just did eat, pray, love. That's, I mean, I've, I've gotten that recommendation quite a few times. So we've gotten like sleep, pray, love. Or sleep, pray, fight was one where you get the fight thing in there too. But um, I was, <laughs> what movie was I seeing? I was seeing a movie with a friend. We go into the movie. I'm telling him we're doing pray. Uh, we're, and I was like, and we're just asking everybody, like, if you have any ideas for like a sleep pun for the name. Oh, gosh, I wish I could remember the name of the movie. It was so boring. The movie was very boring, which is notable for the story, because as soon as we left the movie, he was like, you know, I was thinking about it the whole time. And I got your title. Instead of watching the movie. <laughs> yeah. um, and it, he came up with um, Sedator. Yeah. Pray for sleep. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. We oh. were we were doing Pray for Sleep, but people were like, Pray? And then we were like, The New Predator movie. So we always had to say, We're doing Pray. And they'd be like, What's Pray? The New Predator movie. And they're like, Oh. So we were like, We got to have Predator in there, we think, somewhere. So this guy just saved our lives. Yeah. That, that's, that's genius. That's yep. awesome. Now, uh, Andy, what is, because, uh, especially when you guys first told me about this, I was like, I think Andy could pull it off, but you're very high energy. Uh, and, and so I was like, so what, this is, this is all compliments, by the way, uh, please don't take it any other way, Thank but you're you. very high energy. Uh, but with the podcast, it's, it's, you, you, you hit a switch and are in this sleep, uh, putting people to sleep mode. So what's kind of your process in getting into that voice? Uh, cause it's very it's sleepy. Sleepy. Oh, sleep. I love to hear that. Um, uh, well, the first time I, I think I recorded our first episode, and it was fast. Like it was too fast. Even my roommate, who's our copy editor, was like, he's not a big opinion guy. Like he's just kind of he, he doesn't force his opinion very often. And he was like, it is. It's kind of fast. And I was like, no, it's not. And then I <laughs> sat down to listen. I was like, yes, it is. So, um. My process for slowing my high energy down. It, by the way, not offended. Been told that since whew, day one. I think I was running before I walked. Um, <laughs> but I smoke a a big bowl of indica. <laughs> I don't know if you have to ind- edit that out. I smoke some good indica weed. I get in my little booth. And I usually do everything late at night because my room is above two garage doors and the side gate that goes up the, gr- the driveway. So I'm usually doing this pretty late. So I'll take a nap during the day. And then, um, you know, 10 o'clock rolls around. And I light my bowl and just go get into it. And I just, I let, I, I just relish the words in my mouth. I don't know how to say that <laughs> less, like, <laughs> sensually, but I just kind of, I I chew on them. I, I let the consonants live. I let the breath, the breaths live. I let the, uh, I mean, and Kelsey, it's just so fun because she obviously can't hear it when she's writing it. And sometimes when she'll hear how I said it, she was like, oh, my God, I didn't. She like the beauty of her words is there without her even knowing it. I love that. Um, so she makes it really easy for me to do my job and slow down. Um, but, yeah, sure. I just kind of bring it down a notch and get in my groove. It is 
a struggle sometimes when I'm tired because I will only be like six paragraphs recorded and I've got, you know, six more to do. And I'm like, frick, I'm so sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll go for a walk. I'll pep myself up just enough to get back in there. So it works too well on you, your own. It really <laughs> does. <laughs> and sometimes I'm like, maybe this is too slow. <laughs> I'm slowing way down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we, we're running out of time here. So do we want to do more recommendations that we have? I would love more recommendations. Because I do have one that doesn't really fit into the strong female, but there's a strong female in it. Have you guys seen Green Room? No. No. Green Room is about a punk rock band that ends up at a, at a Nazi club and they have to fight their way out, basically. And uh, and one of the people that they're trapped with is one of the... Well, actually, Alia Shawkat plays a woman in the band, but Imogene Poots is, plays another punk rocker who helps them fight out, so... Yeah, green room. So I'll say I, I one of the things is with action films that Kelsey has come into has has talked about is um like some action films are so much action, there's no relationship. So if we were to like do John Wick, she would have a dickens of a time writing that movie because she delves into the moments in between the punches, right? Yeah. And that movie is all punches. So like you just <laughs> said, like they fight their way out of this club. And I'm like, <laughs> she'd probably have to unpack those relationships pretty dense. It, it's like, not like it, it, there's more to it than that. I'm trying not cool, to spoil cool, cool, it cool. so you guys can Great. watch it. Put it this Great. way. It's an A24 movie. Okay, then so, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. okay. uh, let's see. I'm going to go somewhere a bit different with my suggestion. Um, have either of you heard of New York Ninja? I feel like embarrassed now that I haven't seen a single one of these movies. None that of one them. sounds like you'll have to unpack the punch uh, between the punches. <laughs> uh, maybe a little Why bit. Why is he in New York? <laughs> like, what brought him there? Yeah, How no, did he end up in New York? Yeah, no, it's it's basically it's this weird movie where basically this uh, Hong Kong action star uh, tried to make uh, an action movie in New York in the 80s, but the production fell apart. So, like, a few years ago, uh, Vigor Syndrome, this uh physical media uh, release label uh, took the footage. Uh, there was no audio, so they redubbed it. They re-edited it and basically made kind of a new uh, movie out of it. And it's just kind of this uh, basically what if Superman was a ninja type movie where this uh, cameraman who is also a ninja, his wife is killed by gangsters. So he goes on a one man ninja crime fighting spree in New York City. <laughs> Excellent. I love it. <laughs> I just heard a review for a movie. I'm going to really try hard because I can't remember the name of it, but it was also, it was a remake of, oh, I don't even remember the country it's from, but it was a remake of a movie about people making a movie where they were, shoot, they were filming a one Oh, zombie, one cut of the dead. Film. Yeah, one yes, cut of the yes, dead. Yeah, yeah, I love that movie. Yeah, that, and yeah, that's kind of where my brain was going. Yeah, it was from Japan first, and then yeah, there's been a couple yeah. remakes. Yeah, the reviewers didn't didn't feel like the new one like captured the original, but I was like, well, now I have to go see both because I have to find out. Oh yeah, no, the original is amazing. Uh, like I went in okay. blind, and it, uh, there's some twists and turns that kind of <laughs> caught me off guard. I'm like so impressed that you like caught it before. I don't think I even got further than it was like a movie about a movie. Like, did I even say zombies? I no, can't remember. That, well, that's the <laughs> thing. Like, uh, John and uh, uh, John and Jay always uh, just kind of call me a horror brainiac because like I'm uh, always acing like horror trivia, and you know, like I was able to recognize the poster from just like a partial frame, and like I do I do horror yeah. trivia every month, so like this type of stuff. Like, uh, all I need are just some context clues, and my and uh, my brain goes to work. <laughs> That's nice. impressive. <laughs> Thank you. He walks out his front door and someone throws a Blu-ray at him. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I know I know my stuff. Love it. Korea, give us a recommendation. Oh man. Well, I mean, when you guys first said first said, Oh, for October we might need some recommendations, I immediately was like Army of Darkness, one hundred Oh yeah. Oh, somebody That's maybe it was one. you. It may, some somebody suggested it and I really like that one. I've yeah. been shouting it at you guys. <laughs> yeah. I think it was for me. Somebody driving by my house yelling that. Oh. <laughs> he called Army of Sleepiness. 
Yeah. 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 Or, uh, or, I mean, you could also just do the, uh, the dead movies, you know, night of the sleepy yeah. dead, dawn of the sleepy <laughs> dead. Aww. Day it of the feels sleepy so cute dead. that way. I also, do. I each love one of it. our episodes, we make our mascot is like a, a sheep, a lamb, a little cartoon lamb. Aww. And the lamb dresses up as all of the, the characters, characters from the movie. Yeah. So oh, really cute. <laughs> yeah. Um, Kelsey's husband, Evan, who's our, our third um, party producer, like behind the scenes and does a lot of end, odd end stuff. Uh, he's the one that designs them. And I oh. cannot wait for you guys to see. Predator. <laughs> 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 he, he, I'll just say this. He put, I'll give one thing away. He put a sleep cap and on the, on him, on predator, the lamb predator and at the end of the sleep cat where the little ball is it's a laser i just <laughs> died i nice. i melted i i was like just one happy girl that day we also have one collective recommendation oh here, yeah here we go anybody who listens to the podcast sees this coming a mile away <laughs> rampage yeah <laughs> oh <laughs> oh god i heard you guys like yeah that. i heard yeah. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> it's Shut got it evil it conniving <laughs> brother and sister played by Malin Arkin and I think some guy from SNL. I don't know. Uh, and no, it's got from Dwayne... uh, The Office. It's Jake Lacey, isn't it? Uh, oh, see, that's why I super maybe? don't know yeah. who he is. It's New uh, Jim from The Office. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the but the Rock has a has a very like personal deep friendship with George the Gorilla and. <laughs> There's okay. giant alligators and giant wolf, and it's and of course the wolf everything. flies. Nah. Well, I think you know everyone's <laughs> already been doing the dynamic of the Rock and George the Gorilla, so we would come in through the flying wolf perspective, which would be a little <laughs> bit later in the movie, and just be yeah, a lot. I, I haven't seen it, but <laughs> none of the movies. I feel so bad. Oh. The Office, though, I love that you said that because when I dove in on. Spotify, I just obviously typed in sleep podcast and like just to see what's out there. And of course, there's a ton and I'm clicking through them and I'm listening and I'm getting an idea of what they're trying to make people fall asleep to. And our stuff is one of, some of the most interesting. It, uh, it's the most interesting one out there, in my opinion. Um, there's some cute stuff, but there's like this guy that's like, I'm going to talk about random stuff and you'll fall asleep to that. And I, I just like Kelsey said, nothing was really that. I'm sorry, I'm pivoting on a different topic a little bit. Um, Kelsey was like, I was like, there's no real interesting stuff. Like people are actually reading lullabies. I was like, that's boring. That's too, <laughs> you know? Um, so, and, but I did find the office. Some guy reads, retells each episode and in like a nice calm, sleepy, he doesn't do it like we do it, but he just kind of like describes each episode and you can fall asleep to him talking, but he doesn't have to find a calming landslide. No, sound he effect. doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> a dog bark. That's not too aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we tried to do bullet sound effects and we're just like, this is impossible. No, it's like no, no, no bullets. And I kept uh, being like up, up the echo, up the reverb. And it was just like, and I was like, no, <laughs> that's going to wake me up if I hear a gunshot. I don't care how echoey and sleepy it sounds. <laughs> mm. you, you can always do the uh, Bugsy Malone method and trade out bullets with uh, pies and faces. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> a pillow to the face. <laughs> <laughs> or a slide whistle. A slide whistle oh, instead yeah. of a bullet. <laughs> 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 then we'll have people w laughing and waking up. <laughs> that's that's the ultimate, though. Then slumber party massacre uh, oh, would def <laughs> should definitely be on the. Yeah. <laughs> then you need a calming drill sound. I love it. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you for joining us this morning, Andy and Kelsey. Um, the podcast is Lethal Lullabies. Um, where can everybody, are you on all the socials? Where can people find you if they want to, uh, besides following the podcast on all of wherever they get their podcasts, where else can they find you guys? Um, well, I just want to point out Spotify is our most like lucrative listening platform. If you can give us a listen, follow, review on there. Um, we are basically tracking that the most, but obviously 
anywhere you listen to podcasts. We've got it up on Audible and Apple Podcast right now. Um, so hopefully, and then Kelsey went down the rabbit hole. There's so many podcast servers. So we'd like to get it up on everything in time. Um, but for sure, Spotify, Audible, Apple Podcast. And then we are on all the socials. I have obviously dove in. I was like, I'm going to create a social media account for every account. Um, I have a TikTok now. Yay. Um, <laughs> do you have a Threads yet? I do not. That one's <laughs> brand new, but you link it to your Insta. so It's true. But I also heard that like if you get a thread and then you try to delete the thread, it deletes your Instagram account. You, yeah, but you can deactivate your threads. Interesting. Okay. So I don't know how... That well, works, I'll look but. into that. I'm learning. <laughs> uh, we're most active on Instagram, Lethal Lullabies. Uh, we do have TikTok. It's all Lethal Lullabies. Um, all right. Well, again, thanks for joining us. And everybody go listen to Lethal Lullabies. Um, our uh, theme song is by Restless Spirit. Hey, you guys, Restless Spirit's got a new record coming out. Do you guys see that? And they've also got a song on a new Soundgarden tribute. So, yeah. Um, Restless Spirit really needs to tour... Uh, west of like ohio or something because you know they they kind of stick around their their neighborhood and they need to come here um anyway theme song by restless spirit so go check them out our artwork is by chris fisher so go check him out um you can find us on all the socials just like lethal lullabies but we're on eye of i we are under eye on horror on all the socials except i don't think we're on threads yet because uh korea laughed at me when i mentioned it to him <laughs> <laughs> um threads is actually just like a less toxic twitter so because twitter is a cesspool right now yeah anyway <laughs> so um yeah thanks for joining us again and everybody listen to lethal lullabies and thanks, uh guys. listen to ion horror again in a couple of weeks so for me james j edwards i'm jacob davison i'm jonathan korea oh i'm andy salize i'm kelsey nye keep your eye on horror <laughs> <laughs>